if it was on multiplying complex numbers, I gave you the formula with how to divide them. I just hit the button to end the video by mistake instead of continuing to record. So here are some division examples. And then I'll give you some shots of the booklet questions I want you to try after this. Right, so first one here. Answer A. So Z1 divided by Z2 means it's 6 divided by 10.6 at an angle of 3 pi by 4 take away 1.46. Now, I know that's in radians, so that's fine. Okay, so let's just work that out. So 6 divided by 10.6 is 0 0.57. You can leave it as a fraction if you want. which is, and then the next bit, if you take away those angles, you get 0 0.89. That's me done. Now, I then look at the next one, which was Z2 divided by Z3. So B. Z2 divided by Z3. So what have we got? We've got ten point six divided by eighteen point two at an angle of one point four seven rads take away sixty four degrees. Now that can't happen. I can't do this because one's in radians and one's in degrees. So as I said, we like to work in radians from now on in maths because they are better and more accurate measure. So I have to convert this number here into radians. So remember to do that, you divide by 180, and you multiply by pi, which gives me 16 pi by 45. So I'll just use that. So that should be 16 pi by 45. Or you could use it as in degrees, whatever works for you. Or sorry, as a decimal. Take away. Work that out. 10.6 divided by 18.2 gives me 0 0.58 at an angle of 1.47. Take away 6 by 16 by by 45, which gives me 0 0.35. And these are all fine because they're between negative pi and pi radians, because remember pi is 3.14. Like Z3 divided by Z1. And remember that would be different from Z1 divided by Z3. Z3, that's 18.2 divided by 6 at an angle of 16 pi by 45. Take away 3 pi by 4. So let's just get a calculator and work that out. 6. So that gives me 3.03333. So I'll just put a 3.03. An angle of 16 pi by 45. Take away 3 pi. which is negative 71 pi over 180, 
or negative 1.2 so either leave it as a fraction or put it as a decimal it doesn't matter so that's how easy it is to multiply and divide complex numbers in polar form now remembering we did multiply and divide complex numbers in rectangular form and you need to be able to divide complex numbers in rectangular form in your assignment. It is one of the questions that you need to be able to do. It will say do all your working in rectangular form. That means do not use this. But this is useful for other things. It's, it's quicker. But the reason we don't use it is because it's addition and subtraction. In the question. Now the next thing I would normally do is I would normally give you the proof of this. As you know we're strapped for time so let's just get it get it done and I'll show you how to, to do it. So this is exponential. Form of a complex Now, right. so this is also known as Euler's formula. Right, now there's a big proof for this. To do with Maclaurin and Taylor series. Now I'll put the proof online, you don't need to know what it is, right? So all we know is, right, so z, z equals r at an angle of theta is polar form. Right now, exponential form or Euler's formula is dead straightforward. It is just r e to the power of j theta is the exponential form. Right, but must be in Right, so only way it works, the exponential form, is that this has to be in radians. So effectively all you're really doing is changing that at an angle of sine to e to the power of j. Now, as I've said, there is a proof there, it's all to do with Maclaurin series, but I'm not going to get there. Right, there's not enough time to get there with the time that we've got left. You just, as normal, need to show how to use these things. Okay, so let's just have a look at how this all links together with rectangular form and all that, right? So we've got our three forms, right? We've got rectangular, we've got polar, and we've got exponential. Okay, so rectangular is z equals x plus jy, and our polar form is z equals r an angle of theta, right? And then our exponential form is z equals e to the power of, sorry, I messed up my r, r e to the power of j. Okay, that's an exponential form. Now, a couple of things. Polar and exponential form are pretty much the same thing. So, just like in exponential, just like in polar form, it's easy to multiply and divide an exponential form. But it's exactly the same method. But remember, 
you can only add and subtract in rectangular form. So that's when rectangular form is useful. Now we can multiply and divide rectangular, but it is more difficult. And I've said you do need to do that in one of your questions. Right, so a couple of things. Let's go from rectangular to polar. You use r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Theta equals the inverse tan of y over x. And remember, you should have done your we are again diagram. Okay. With theta, negative theta, negative y plus theta, and theta take away. Okay, here, a little. We, we did too much to go right now to go from polar to exponential is dead easy. You just swap your at an angle sign for e j effectively. Like that. Okay, now. Cannot go straight from rectangular to exponential. It's easier to do it in two steps. And you certainly can't go from exponential all the way back to rectangular. So you would just go the opposite way. If you swap EJ for your angle sign, and remember x equals r cos theta and y equals r So that's how it's all linked together. So if you want to go from rectangular to exponential, you first go to polar, then you go to exponential. If you want to go from exponential to rectangular, you first go to polar, just doing this simple swapping over, and then use r cos theta and r sine theta. Now, the most important thing to remember when you're doing a question on complex numbers is whatever form the question gives you the complex number in, you must give them it back in the same form. So if the numbers are given to you in exponential form, your answer must be given to given in an exponential form. Even if you've had to convert to rectangular or convert to polar halfway through the question. If something's in rectangular form, at the start, it must be given an answer in rectangular form. If you don't do that, you lose a whole lot of marks, and that's what happened to the class we've already done this assignment. So I'm letting you know now that's a common place for mistakes. Right, so let's just try a couple of examples. Let's express an exponential form. So, 1 z equals 5.6 at an angle of 1.4 2 z equals 11.2 at an angle of negative 65 degrees. And three z equals eight take away j y. Let's tidy that up a wee bit. Right. right, you can try these yourself if you want, but let me just quickly go through them. Right, so the answer. First one's as easy as you would think. Right, so z equals, well, that's in radians, all I do is I swap my angle sign for E, J. That's me done. Simple as that. So that's an exponential form. 
z is equal to 5.6 e to the power of j 1.44. Look at number two. Now, I've got a problem. Exponential form doesn't deal with degrees. So I need to change this to radians. So remember, we divide by 180 and we multiply by pi. Which gives me negative 13 pi by 36. That's what my angle should be there. So it's as simple as just writing 11.2 e. And remember, it's a negative, so it's going to be negative j 13 pi by 36. Okay, so it's 11.2 e to the power of negative j 13 pi by 36. I know that, that three and th those two threes maybe aren't as clear, but I'm trying to make it look like it's a power, right? Because it needs to be a power alongside the j. Let me just maybe rewrite that for you. 13 pi by 36. I think I may even have made it worse. Anyway, let's go into this last one then, right? So this is in rectangular. So that's a wee bit more challenging, maybe. So Let's have a little look. So, first of all, I've got to change it to polar. So, let's go back and look at my wee diagram. So, to go from rectangular to exponential, I need to do this first. So, I need to draw my wee quadrant diagram, use my formula for r, use my formula for theta, and then finally, once I've done that, swap the angle button for ej. Now, remember in radians. Are vital. So when I'm converting to recti from rectangular to polar, I should do it in radians because it makes more sense. Right, so we diagram. So that means it's 8 along the way, 5 down the way. So that means now my complex numbers in there. And remember, my read coordinates are negative theta, pi take away theta negative pi plus theta, oh, sorry that should be theta not negative theta, right so theta and negative theta and it happens to be in here so I'm doing negative theta with my angle so r equals square root of 8 squared plus negative 5 squared again that can just be 5 if you want and you're working it does make a difference to me That's the square root of 89, which is 9.3. Right, theta equals inverse tan of y, which is negative 5 over 8. But remember, that negative has been dealt with here. So we just type it in as if it's a positive. Gives me zero point five six radians. Right, so in polar form, Z equals nine point four three at an angle of zero point. But that's not what I was asked to do. I wanted it in exponential form. So it's 9.43e to the power of j 0 0.56. That doesn't really look like a j, does it? Let me just see if I can make that look a wee bit clearer. As I said, I'm trying to get used to this new software. And it's, some, it's making some things a wee bit easier and some things a wee bit more difficult, but that is what it is. Right, now, what we, from the stuff that we've done so far, you can try the questions in Worksheet 6. 
That was multiplying complex numbers. Worksheet 7, which is dividing complex numbers. And worksheet 8, which is the exponential form of a complex number. I'll just put up the exponential form loop clip. So that's the multiplying polar form. Worksheet on division in polar form. Another one there. And then lastly, as I said, the proof of exponential form of a complex number is all to do with Maclaurin series. It's in the booklet. As I said, I don't really have time to do it, but let's have a wee look. Here's worksheet eight. Right, worksheet eight, questions one and two could now be attempted. Okay, so those questions there could now be attempted putting something from, comp, uh, from polar to exponential and rectangular to exponential and it's something you're going to need to be able to do for the assignment. But question number two is converting from exponential into rectangular. So just effectively follow the stuff I've done already. I'm going to do I'll do one example for you of converting to rectangular form. So let me just do this one here. Let me do question number one. Okay. Right, so I want to convert this to rectangular form. So first thing I'm going to do is convert it to polar form. So Z1 is 5 at an angle of 5 by 3. Fair enough. Then remember all we need to do is x is r cos theta, y is r sin theta, so x is 5 cos pi by 3 and y is 5 sin pi by 3. Type that into your calculator. You get 2.5 and Four point three three. So Z is two point five plus J four point three three. Simple as that. So you could do the rest of the examples from worksheet uh, from question two and worksheet eight now. And that would be us pretty happy. Right now Next thing is multiplying and dividing complex numbers in exponential. Oh. Right, so if z1 equals r1 e to the power of j theta1 and z2 equals r1 e to the power of j theta2, oops sorry that should be r2. Right, so you do the exact, think about it, exponential and polar form are pretty much identical, right? All that happens is, yeah, you've got an exponential factor in there, but the rules and everything that we've seen so far are the same apart from it has to be in radians. 
Now, so then it's exactly what you would think. Z1 multiplied by Z2 means you multiply the R's. And you add the angles. But obviously you don't have the angle sign in there. You get the EJ sign in there. And Z1 divided by Z2 means that we divide the R's and we subtract the angles. So it's exactly what you would think. And remember, these have to be radians and Or remember, you could really think of that as 3.14 and about to 3.14, right? Obviously, it's not exactly 3.14 because that's not what pi is, but that's just a wee rough guide. And remember, to fit, if it's not in this region, your final answer, you add or subtract 2 pi. fix. That looks awful. Okay, right, so let's do just a couple of examples of this. And then we're really getting on to the important thing from this, the thing that's going to give us marks. Because, to be honest, a lot of this stuff, or everything so far we've done before, and one of the questions that you're asked to do at this level is something you could have done in engineering one. It would have been really difficult in engineering one, but you still could have done it. So... Let's have a little little go. So example. That's three pi by four. And Z2, ten point two e to the j one point eight nine, and Z3 equals one e to the power of j. Make it a negative negative three point one one. So questions will be find Z one Z three Z one Z two and then Z three divided by Z Okay, you could have more than that. If you, you could have Z1 times Z2 times Z3. Right. Okay, so let's do this first one. So Z1, Z3. As you multiply these two together, that's 5.6 multiplied by 1.43 e to the power of j 3 pi by 4 plus negative 
3.11. Tab onto your calculator. 8.00, or so 8.01. And it's 3 pi by 4, take away 3.11 which gives you negative 0 0.75, so that's going to be negative in front of G. And that's me done. Right, see if I can fit this next one in here. Right, so Z1, Z2 is going to be 5.6 multiplied by 10.2 e to the power of J 3 pi by 4 plus 1.89. Just type that into the calculator. 5.6 10 by 2 is 57.12. Next bit here, you've got. 3 pi by 4 plus 1.89, which is 4.25. Now, this is when I would always ask you, are we happy with that? And I'm hoping your answer is no, because that's more than 3.14, that's more than pi. So we know if it's more than pi, we take away 2 pi from that answer, which gives us negative 2.04. So that's your answer. 57.12 e to the power of negative j 2.04. Because I, had to, I can't have that. So I've got to take away 2 pi. Right, and then C, so Z1 divided by Z3, sorry, Z3 divided by Z1, I think it was. Z3 divided by Z1, so that is 1.43 divided by 5.6. E, J, negative 3.11, take away 3 pi by 4. Okay. So 1.43 divided by 5.6 is 0 0.26. negative 3.11 plus the take away sorry take away 3 pi by 4 and I get negative 5.47 but again I've got that same problem that's less than 3.14 this time, or less than pi. So that means that we've got to add on 2 pi this time. And that gives me 0 0.82. So that would be my answer. So again, I don't think it's anything complicated. You're just multiplying and dividing, adding and subtracting, using your calculator, using the fraction button. But the only wee thing you've got to watch is to make sure it's between pi and negative pi. If we'll reach it. Right. Last thing that we're going to look at in this just now. Right. Is... 
and this will be used quite extensively from now on, not in this course, but when you go to university. university. Moivre's theorem. You'll see that in this math we've had Euler, we've now got De Moivre. This is far more mathematical. You're hearing stuff named after prominent mathematicians a lot more now. So you'll see that this stuff is quite important. Right, so this is used to find the power of a complex number. quickly. Right. So what I mean by that is if I have and I wanted to find z to the power of 5. Right? Let's say I wanted to do that. So that's finding the fifth power of this complex number here. So it could be squared, cubed, power of 4, power of 5, power of 6, power of 7, power of 8. Right, so up until now, what I would have had to do is write, right, z to the power of 5 is right, so that's going to be 3 take away j 8 to the power of 5, right? So that is 3 take away j to the power of 8, multiplied by 3 take away j to the power of 8, multiplied by 3 take away j to the power of 8, multiplied by 3 take away j to the power of 8, multiplied by 3 take away j to the power of 8. And then what you'd have to do is multiply out all those brackets. Now, for the power of 5, it's a pain in the neck. But if you have to do it to the power of 20, or the power of 30, you're going to be there of A. Right? So this is where the stuff we've learned about exponentials in the past, and the fact that in the last bit I showed you that you can write a complex number as an exponential. So, let's have a little look at this. So. And this is, I'm going to do a little proof. It's not really a proof. And believe me, I don't really want to do this on this software because it's starting to slow down in this old laptop, but it's the best we can do. So if Z, we know an exponential form is Re to the J theta. Right? Now what we want to do is do the power of that. Right? So what I want to do is to R e to j theta to the power of n. Look straightforward. Right now, my rules of indices and exponentials, right, tells me that if this was 4 cubed, if this was 4x cubed, you would cube the 4 and you cube the x, right? So that's so that gives me r to the power of n. Right now, if I multiply, if I've got a power on a power, it becomes a multiply. So that becomes e j theta times n. Now, that means we normally write, that, write it as this, though. We normally write it as r n e to the power of j J n theta. Right? We do just it's just normal mathematics. We do that right now. So that means, so if I want to work out z to the power of five, like above, I need my, my complex number in exponential form, which in reality 
means you type it into a calculator. In this course means you have to show you're working, but in reality, you would change it to polar form, and then you would just do arc to the power of five, and multiply the angle by five. Now, in polar form is where it's most useful. Okay, so in exponential form is how we would prove above how that works. But in polar form, so this thing here, remember all we need to do is swap the EJ for the angle sign. So all we've got to do is put the length of our complex number, which is r, or our modulus, to the power of n, and multiply the angle by n. So we do r to the power of n, and we multiply the angle by n. And remember, this has to be in radians. And check n theta is Between negative pi and y. That's the last thing you've got to do. So basically the, because Euler found this form of a complex number and found that polar form could actually be written as an exponential, it's effectively allowed us to do something really simple in polar form. So Let's have a look at a little example here. So, right, so Z1 So find z1 to the power of 6, z2 to the power of 8, c z3 power of 5. Right, now so let's look at what we've been given. So we want it to be in polar form or exponential form. Now polar form, we've seen that if we've got a complex number in polar form, you do r to the power of n, and you multiply the angle by n, where n's whatever our power is. So, a, z1 to the power of 6. So this is in polar form, which is what we want, and it's in radians. So we can go straight into the Moivre's theorem. Because those are the two things we need. Right. So Z1 equals 4 at an angle of 3.11. So that means that Z1 to the power of 6 is 4 to the power of 6 at an angle of 6 times 
3.11. Because remember, the 6 becomes a power on the R and it multiplies our angle. So Z1 divided by 6 equals so 4. Let's put that. 4 divided by 6 has. 4096 at an angle of 6 times 3.11, which gives me 18.66. But we've got a problem. This has to be between minus pi and pi. So we've got to keep on taking off 2 pi until we get it between negative 3.14 and 3.14, really negative pi. pi. Right, so 18.66 take away 2 pi, right, 12.37, so that's no use. Take away 2 pi again, 6.093, so that's no use. Take away 2 pi again, and I get negative negative 0 0.19 and that's me done okay next part okay b z2 i'm going to write it down just so that i don't have to keep going up so that's 13 an angle of 42 degrees oh no it's in polar form but it's of no use to me at the moment because that's in degrees so remember, I need to put that in radians. We divide by 180 and we multiply by pi. So that gives me 7 pi by 30. Or I could write it as a decimal, whatever suits. I'm just going to leave it like that. Right. So I'm doing it to the power of 8. Right. So that's going to be 13 the power of 8 at an angle of 8 times 7 pi by 30. 13 to the power of 8 has a horrible number. Let me write that down. 815730721. So imagine trying to work that out without the Moivre's theorem. Not applying everything out in rectangular form, it'll take you forever. And I get that to be 28 pi by 15. Now if I look at my, if I press SD for my calculator, it tells me 5.86, so that's too much as well. So I know I need to take away 2 pi from that also until I get an answer between pi and minus pi. So take away 2 pi gives me negative 2 pi by 15. Or negative 0 0.42. Now, I've not got to convert that back to degrees, that's fine in radians, right? It's only polar, rectangular, exponential. If it's in degrees or radians, it's fine, right? If you leave it in radians. Right, now, here's where we come into difficulties. C. We've got Z3 is 1.5. Eight four two take away j zero point seven seven eight. That's in rectangular. So that doesn't fit any of my criteria. So that means we've got to put it into polar slits. So we always do right. Draw we diagram. So one point four two. We go a little bit here. Negative 0 0.77 will be a bit here. 
So we're going to be in that quadrant there. And remember, this quadrant here is just the negative of the angle. Okay, right, so that means that r is the square root of 1.842 squared plus negative 0 0.778 squared. Type that into my calculator and it gives me 1.9999999999, which I'm just going to write as 2. 2.00 doesn't make a difference. Right, so then theta equals inverse tan of y over x, that's negative 0 0.778 over 1.842. And remember, you don't type in the negative, your calculator deals with that yourself. So either diagram that you've done above, the quadrant still with that, so that gives me 0 0.40, or negative, sorry, 0 0.40. Right, so that means that in polar form, Z3 equals 2 at an angle of 0 0.40 grams. Right, because remember it needs to be in radians, not in degrees. Right, now I was wanting to do that to the power of 5. So z3 to the power of 5 is going to be 2 to the power of 5 at an angle of 5 multiplied by 0 0.40. So z3 to the power of 5 is, well 2 to the power of 5 is 52, 2 at an angle of 2.0 or negative, hold on, part of not I never took that negative into account, sorry, the negative from this here, so that should be negative there. That was negative 2. Right. right. And then you might sit back and go, well, that's me completed. But remember what I said about complex numbers. Whatever form the question gives you your complex number in, your answer must be given in. So that's in, that's in polar, not rectangular. So if I start in rectangular, I have to first change to polar. I then need to use the Moynfrey's theorem, and then I need to convert back to rectangular. So x equals 32 cos negative 2, and y equals 32 sine negative 2. And remember you can put a negative into these because it's not inverse cos or inverse sine. So I get thir negative 13.32 and y equals 29.10 negative 29.10 so our com final complex number z3 to the power of 5 is uh, thir negative 13.32 plus, sorry, take away j, take away j 29.10. And that is what we have as our final answer. So it's all to do with the format you have been given the complex number. Now we've got one tiny thing left to do in complex numbers, and then we need to move on to first order differential equations. As I said in the email over the last couple of days, we need this done by the 18th of June at the latest. So I will endeavour to have the course finished next week, which means there'll be another lecture tomorrow and another couple of lectures next week. I know it's a lot to do, but it's a hand we've been dealt. You're obviously going to get an open book assignment, so it's going to be a lot easier than normal, and I'll give you all the revision sheets that I normally do. If you have any questions, please email me.